color or black or white? Is there a right time for either or both? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode in my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto Lightroom Classic, and I talk you through my thoughts, my workflow, and the edit of a particular image from a recent shoot. Now, this week, it's the turn of a journey that I took up to a place in County Clare called Two Mile Gate, and I met up with a buddy of mine who was my wingman for many years, and I hadn't seen in a long while, and in fact, had he hadn't been out with the camera in a long while, which is Dermot O'Donovan, aka Dodd. And it was great to be able to meet up with him. It was like as if we picked up from things as we left off. Now we've been in contact obviously since then, but to get out and shoot with him again was like going back down memory lane. I've had some great trips with Dodd, not only here in Ireland, but also abroad. And he's somebody who inspires me in regards to how he approaches his shots. Now, on this particular day, we booked it. If you remember, if you've seen the episode where I was at Kilcray Friary and he so rudely interrupted me, we set a time to meet up and we picked that date, come hell or high water, in regards to the weather. And unfortunately, the weather wasn't the best. But at the same time, it still gave me an opportunity to try something new and to also show you something new in how I approach a shot and moreover, how I edit a shot. You see, the conditions were flat grey and it's something that we are presented with on many, many occasions in landscape photography. And my natural instinct was, okay, it's going to be gray, I'm going to go mono. And I did go mono in my mind, but when I was starting to edit the images, I just figured, okay, let's see how they look in color and also obviously in mono. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's jump over onto Lightroom Classic and I'll talk you through my edit of the color image first, and then I'll show you how I approach it from the mono point of view. Let's go. All right, so I have my image here now on Lightroom Classic, and I'm going to talk you through, like I said a moment ago, how I'm going to edit the shot from two ways. So let's jump in here, and here's the image. And the one I pick, what I chose, was the one that was taken of me when I was stood at the end of the jetty. And this also gives me a good opportunity to show the differences that you can get because there is color within the image. But before I even start on that, you can see probably why I had opted and thought that I would go down the route of mono, because there is nothing in the sky. There's a very, very little bit of green available on the hills on the other side. But you do have some green here on the reeds either side, and then you've got some nice texture on the detail as well. Now, when I was editing this shot as well, I toyed with the idea of doing a sky replacement. But for me, I didn't want to do the sky replacement because this low-lying cloud is all over the hills as well here. So I'd have to adjust that as well, and I didn't want to be able to have extra additional challenges with the image. For me, I like the idea of that it being flat in a mono, I can bring out the difference in the contrast between the white and the black. Now, I decided to shoot and stand at the very end of this pier, and it was Dermot who hit the shutter. If you haven't seen the episode actually on how this shot I linked to it up here but for me when I look at the uh, image here it reminds me obviously of when I was there but when I definitely look here what did I do and would I do anything differently I don't think I would do anything differently I am positioned pretty much symmetrical in the image uh, I use my polarizer as well so that we could see down here into the water and the way the frame is done I wanted to make sure I was as symmetrical as possible now there is a couple of challenges that you will encounter when you're editing an image because if you're editing an image for color you take a certain approach and you're taking another image you're taking a different approach for a a, um, mono or for black and white. So if you see here, I've shot the, took the image at 2.5 seconds at f8 and ISO 100, and I was at 27 mil. Now, the way I set this shot up as well, I had to make sure that I was ultra precise with the camera to make sure that I had more or less symmetry in the image. And I purposely chose this jetty because there was other jetties that had no reeds over here or no reeds over there. For me, it had much better balance in the image. So first and foremost, what I'm going to do, like I generally would do any Anyway, is I'm going to check my horizon. So if I come in here to this and I come to the bottom, I look at my uh, lines and I can see, okay, am I slightly off here? Possibly this way, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, 0 0.21 of a change, only marginal. That's going to be the first thing that I will do here. Now, if you look at this, this um, end of the jetty isn't exactly parallel, and that's something that you could get caught out with because you might try and balance your image or straighten your image based on this, but in fact, it's the horizon which is the most natural thing to base that off of. So that's the first thing that I would suggest. The second thing then that I want to do is go into my uh, settings and I'll go into my general settings here and what I'll do is for 
always ease of use and click on auto and see what it's going to do. Now, what it can do is it can bring out some of the details here in the shadows and also it doesn't overexpose the sky. But there is a small bit of detail in the sky, but it's incidental. I'm not really interested in that because it was dark clouds. Now, the edit on this, again, auto does a fairly good job, but I want the image to pop a bit further. I also want to have, you know, me to be able to pop a bit further as well. So I want to see what I can do from that. So looking at the histogram, it's going to tell me what I can and can't do. If I come into my blacks, if I increase my blacks here and just looking at the area down here, if I go back to where Otto had said, you look at these blue uh, lines or blue colors, that's because I have this ticked up here. So if you tick that, it shows you visually where your image is underexposed. So for me, they're blacker than black and I want to be able to bring those up a bit further. So I'm looking at the histogram here. I still have a small bit of black, but nothing major. If I take my shadows and I whack those all the way up, yes, it does make the image brighter, but it doesn't really help the image. I think it makes it too pastel or 2 HDR and such like that. So I'm going to bring that slightly down. But again, looking at the histogram here, I can still move back up my blacks. And if I take my blacks back up, now my histogram is better from there. Now, dehaze is a tool that I use regularly, but the haze here was something that was interesting for me. But if I look at dehaze here and I just drag it up like this, you see it makes the image darker. It does bring out some of the texture in the sky, which again, I do like. So if I take that dehaze and now I take my uh, exposure and I bring that back up again, just brighten the whole set of the image. Now the whole top of the area here becomes too bright. So I think what I will do is I'll take my dehaze specifically on the sky. So I'm going to bring that back down and I'm going to bring my dehaze haze back here as well. Vibrance from a color point of view, as you've watched these episodes, you'll know I'll always give a small bit of vibrance because the image is flat from a raw point of view. This is suggested it goes to 15. Now the green on my um, jacket is what I want to make actually pop, but I like the way that it's there because it matches the reads, as I said, from the outset. So I'm going to give this a bit more vibrance, bring it up to around 27. And then on the saturation, I'm just going to add a small bit onto that. Now, I haven't gone near anything on my white balance. And let's look at the white balance for a moment. OK, so it's on shot. If we go into auto and see what it does, it doesn't really change the image much. Now, if I go into my picker here and I pick a gray cloud, watch what happens to the image. So it's a bit of a darker gray. So again, you know, the image now is a lot brighter. It loses that blue. Now, the blue was there because it was in blue hour, but I can circumvent that if I take it and use the picker tool to be able to take a natural or neutral gray. Now, for me here, it's a bit too yellow. So I'm going to bring that slightly down and I'm going to adjust it to a more balanced tone here. And now you can start to see the green coming out better from where I'm at. On that image, all I want to do now from here is say, OK, do I need to look at my crop? So I am more or less center in the image here, but I want to try and get myself more center. So if I go in here and I change this to 16.9, by the way, I remember the, the, the sky is more or less incidental. So I can either bring me down here, and keep me at the top of the image, or now I've got the option as I can remove some of that and keep it here. That to me, I think I'm too symmetrical. So I want to be able to have the pier more or less in the center. So I'll use my rule of thirds here. And as you can see now, that image is a lot more balanced. So from that point of view, yeah, image I think could be done. If I go into my effects and I just apply a slight uh, vignette, now more uh, emphasis is brought into the center of the image. And then the final thing I'll do on that as general is I'll go into my detail and then I will go in and look for any noise and use the AI denoise. So that's how I would edit the image here from a color point of view. And yeah, it's a nice image, but it's lacking punch. So what I want to do here is I'm going to right click on this image here and I'm going to go to create a virtual copy. So that's going to create an exactly the same copy. And now I'm going to reset that. Actually, before I reset that, what I'll do is I'll go into my basic here and I'm going to take all color out of the image. So if I wanted to go for a simple plain mono shot, I can do exactly the same. But when you are in a mono world, you're not dealing with colors. So the color sliders will still have an effect, but they won't show as colors. They'll show us how they're influencing on the image. So if I, for argument's sake here, go in and take my uh, vibrance and bring that up, you know, you won't any change because there's nothing here on that. However, if I go into my uh, not color mixer, my color grading. And I say, OK, I want to be able to take my uh, shadows and I want to be able to increase the colors more on a, a red. See the red, red changes here. So even though all the color is taken out, you can influence and change how the image is going to look. You can make it more green. You can make it go more blue. And that's more of a kind of a 
uh, movie kind of image type. And for me, I kind of like that one here, looking at the image, but it is a bit gray per se. I can do the same on my highlights. So again, I can change that. So up in the sky, I can change the color, make that go green. I can make that go red. I can make that go blue and I can change it to whatever color I want it to be. If I match it here on this, it takes it across the entire image, which also is quite interesting. Um, also, you know, if you go into, um, this panel here, okay, so you can change your midtones specifically, you can change your shadow specifically, you can change your highlights, but then you can also take global adjustments. So if I take the global adjustment and I bring it over here, now it becomes more of a blue. I can change it more of a green, more of a darker blue, more of a cyan, more of a red, more of a yellow, more of an orange. Now, for me, looking at this one here, I kind of like that color and I think it works well because there's a slight bit of color coming through. You can just see the greens that are coming through on that but it's not your true mono image. So for me, what I want to do again is I'm going to reset this image back to where it was, and then I'm going to go into my black and white specifics. And if I go black and white, it changes the color, gets rid of all that. You no longer have your option for your vibrance and your saturation. But if I now go into auto here again, what it'll do is it'll make the image what it appears to be or appeals to be the best. Now I can bring my blacks all the way down here, which makes them darker than dark, or I can bring up here and then you start seeing the details in that. If I take my shadows, bring them all the way up. Now it will work perfectly fine because it doesn't have an overexposure from the color point of view. If I take my highlights and bring those up, the image goes a bit too bright. So I can bring that down here. I can take my shadows down slightly, bring up my whites again. Same as what I would do on the color is I'm going to have the histogram tell me what I can and can't do. So my whites up to here makes the sky a bit brighter. And now if I take my blacks here and bring those down, you get a good bit of contrast. And speaking of contrast, now I can start introducing contrast. If I go to the left here, you see a lot more coming into the image, a lot more detail as well coming through on that. And I think that's where for me, it gets really, really interesting. Now, if I take my dehaze here now, now it has more of an effect and I can start to bring out that sky that you see above here. And I can start to see all of the detail within the image. Now I'm going to apply the same methodology here. I'm going to change this to a 16.9. I'm going to bring this onto my horizon from here. And now there is my mono image. Finally, go into my effects. And again, now take my um, vignette and I'm bringing more attention into the center. And that to me is more of a mysterious and moody image, which is what it was on the day. Now, if we do a comparison between the mono image and then we'll also have a look at the color image here. You can see that there is a slight difference actually in the horizon, but I think, you know, I can take that and copy that into it if I wanted to. So control and C, which is copy. I can check none and then I can go into my crop, my straighten horizon. It's the same image. Take that over here and then control and V and now the horizon is exactly the same in both images. And you can see the difference here. If I run you through, I'll press F to go into full screen. So there is the mono image and then there is the color image as well. So yeah, just a different image or different video to show you what you can do from one image. Now, not always does it suit for the uh, image to be in black and white or color. But on this occasion, like I said, I was in the mindset for shooting in um, black and white, but it just so happens as well with color, it can work out as well also. So thank you very, very much as always for joining this episode. Hope you've learned something from this, from my editing process. If it's your first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange voll.